Welcome everybody to this micro lecture on law. This lecture of today is structured in the following way. We will first see some examples, uh, then look at uh, the definition or one definition of law. We'll then uh, see the uh, uh, separation of powers and the hierarchy of law. As you can see, uh, this micro lecture is structured according to those uh, guiding questions uh, which you can already reflect by now and which will be answered by the end of this lecture. So how to define law, uh, the question whether there are different forms of law, who has the power uh, to enact law, so to create new law, uh, and last but not least, uh, two concepts, so the, this idea of Montesquieu, the separation of powers, which is a very old concept, uh, which can also uh, help us to explain uh, uh, new developments. And last but not least, the question if there are certain categories of law which carry more weight. As you can see, there are some examples. Uh, and if we try to answer the question, which of those uh, examples uh, qualify as law, we have one example which is called a treaty on European Union. We have another document which is called an act, the e-commerce uh, act. Yet another terminology if uh, the next example is called uh, Austrian road traffic code. Uh, so we can already see that there, that there is different terminology. Therefore you might wonder why the next uh, example is on the list uh, which is called uh, the law on air pollution. Uh, but still we will see if the name uh, is of relevance or rather the content. We have then, again, another terminology, a decree uh, setting a certain uh, speed limit, a provision which does not enforce but rather motivate uh, certain behavior, and we have the example of a directive, yet another terminology, so this directive on electronic commerce in the internal market. Another uh, directive on uh, product liability, and if we compare the previous examples uh, to uh, the next one, we have the possibility, so that's uh, a certain behavior, if you like, of sending uh, not only ministers but state secretaries to the Council of Ministers, which is the Council of the European Union. We also have, uh, as other examples, codes of conduct. We have ethical uh, principles. We have uh, MCI's general terms and conditions, MCI's house rules. Uh, and last but not least, judgments of either national courts or of the uh, Court of Justice of the European Union. What's the definition of law, or let's say one definition of law? As you can see, uh, the, this one definition uh, refers to a positive law as opposed uh, to natural law. That is an existing system of social rules uh, which can be enforced uh, uh, and where non-compliance can be punished. So um, as we can see uh, in the, the details of this definition, we have rules uh, which regulate human behavior, behavior uh, and which can be backed up by uh, sanctions in case of non-compliance. Those uh, rules are generally enforced, but uh, if law is not enforced, of course, that does not mean uh, that those uh, docu or those rules would not be qualified as law. So law is in general enforced, but if certain rules are not enforced, that does not mean that that does not qualify as law. Law also sets up rules how new law can be enacted. So normally we find that in a constitution, which defines who has the power under which uh, circumstances or formal rules to create a uh, new law and uh, as you can see uh, in the last uh, bullet point law is normal is or law would also be qualified as law if we would uh, perceive it to be unjust so here we have the relationship of law to justice or fairness which ideally overlaps but of course there can also be some uh, differences now, if we um, look at the, or if we combine this definition and uh, look at those examples from before, uh, 
We have the Treaty on the European Union, which is a document enacted by the member states of the European Union. At national level, so one level below, we have two, ex two examples um, of uh, law which has been enacted by the Austrian Parliament. And the one example which is already uh, called law on uh, um, air pollution that has been enacted not at national level but at a regional level by the Tyrolean Parliament. We have a decree which is enacted by uh, the, the governor of Tyrol, so not by the uh, Tyrolean Parliament. There was one example which uh, was invented, but it, might, it can show you that there might be a gap uh, or, uh, between uh, law and morality. And we have uh, on, on, on the bottom of that slide uh, an example, this directive which has been enacted by uh, the European Parliament and the Council of Ministers. Yet a similar example, this directive on product uh, liability, which has only been enacted by the Council of the EU. This possibility of sending not only ministers but also state secretaries uh, to uh, the Council of Ministers, that is an example of customary law. And as you can see, we also have uh, soft law. We have documents enacted by international uh, bodies like the World Medical Association uh, and two documents enacted by or stemming from MCI, uh, which we'll see in, in the following. So as it was mentioned on the previous slide, uh, we have the two notions of soft and hard law. And as you can uh, see, soft law is not binding in itself, so it cannot create rights and obligations. It is not it is not directly applicable, uh, so it cannot create enforceable rights. Um, but it also tries to regulate human behavior, so it also has a normative uh, function. Uh, so very often we have situations where either a body complies with those rules or they have to explain why they do not comply, or we have naming or, uh, or shaming, so uh, which relates more to social behavior. What is very important to emphasize is that soft law, although it's not legally binding, that does not mean that it's not important. And we can see an increasing tendency of soft law both at national as well as uh, at EU level. What is customary law? Normally law is enacted top down by parliament but uh, and is written. Customary law is enacted so it uh, 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 emerges bottom up and it's not written. So if a certain group of people, if they have a certain behavior over a certain time and if they perceive it to be law, then as we can see, that's what we call customary law. So those two preconditions uh, at the very uh, bottom of the slide, which can also create law, um, which is different, but still which we, would qu which we do qualify as law. As we have also seen, uh, the name, act, code, uh, and so on, is not really decisive. So it's rather the substance, the content of the document, which is important in order to or not to qualify it as law. Normally, as we've seen uh, at EU level, EU directives, also regulations, are normally enacted by the European Parliament and the Council of Ministers. We've also seen one example the Product Liability Directive, which has only been enacted by uh, the Council of Ministers. We'll now see more on those uh, related uh, concepts of the separation of powers and the hierarchy of law, the relationship of law and morality or ethics on, uh, on the other side. That's uh, part of a different micro lecture. What are the functions of law? The first function is order. And as you can see from uh, that example, it does not really matter if everyone is driving on the right or on the left-hand side, as long as everyone is driving on the same side. So that's the function of order. As already mentioned earlier, uh, also unjust law can be qualified as law, according to this one definition. But of course, ideally, law and justice uh, should go uh, hand in hand justice uh, or fairness as a synonym. Law also has a function to maintain power, so that's what we normally can find in a constitution. On the other hand, uh, the last uh, function is the function to control power, so that 
constitutional courts can decide that laws enacted by parliament are against the constitution, so that also the lawmaker has to uh, respect certain uh, rules, uh, the notion of checks and balances, and also the separation of powers, which we'll see in, in the following. So, before we look at the three elements of this separation of power, of this triangle, let me very briefly explain you why this idea has been elaborated. Uh, if, you, if we go back in history to the French Revolution, before the French Revolution, all the power was in the hand of one stakeholder, the monarch, the absolute monarch, uh, the, the king. And uh, obviously, uh, if someone has too much power, there is a tendency that power might be abused. So that's why uh, French philosopher uh, Montesquieu came up with the idea to distinguish three branches of power and to separate them so that no, that no power can uh, become too powerful and hence that, uh, the, that the power would not uh, be abused. So what are those uh, three powers, as you can see? First of all, we have the legislative power here displayed on top, which is normally a parliament. So the one uh, branch that is has the power to enact new law. We then have uh, the executive power. Those are the ones which enforce the law. So typically the government, uh, so to say. And last but not least, we have the judiciary power, so the courts, which decide uh, if the law has been correctly applied or if there, is a, uh, if there are any litigations, they decide how to interpret uh, the law. So that's uh, the separation of power. Um, as I said, it's rather an old concept, but still highly uh, valid. And if you just look at the topic of Brexit, very long, for a very long time, uh, the government in the United Kingdom uh, had the opinion that the government, so the executive power, is the one power to negotiate uh, Brexit uh, with the European Union. It was then the judiciary power, so the courts, the, the UK Supreme Court, which has decided that also Parliament has to be involved. So, so we can see one example of a power struggle between those institutions where the judiciary power has decided that it's not only the government, the executive, but also Parliament, which has to be involved in order to negotiate Brexit from the UK perspective. Now, if we combine the previous examples to this separation of power, you can see here that um, we have examples which uh, uh, we would qualify as acts of the legislative power. So the E-Commerce Act, the Austrian Road Traffic Code, the Law on Air Pollution, uh, and those two uh, directives. So they are part of the legislative uh, power, either at national or at EU level. Obviously, the core judgments uh, are par, uh, acts stemming from the uh, judiciary power. And we have one example, a decree uh, at a regional level, uh, which is part of the executive power. This already leads us to the next uh, very important concept, uh, the hierarchy of law. As you can see on top of that uh, uh, hierarchy, we have EU law, which has primacy over national law. And below that, uh, at national level, we have the constitution, with also con uh, comprising certain structural principles. Then we have ordinary legislation enacted by parliament. We have administrative regulations enacted by the executive branch, court judgments, and so on. So again, if we combine those examples with this uh, hierarchy, you can see that on the very top we have uh, EU primary law and uh, EU secondary law, so also a hierarchy within EU law. And as you can see, uh, EU primary law is in has been enacted by the member states, EU secondary law by the European Parliament and the Council of Ministers. We also have examples of um, ordinary legislation enacted by the Austrian Parliament or one level below by the regional Tyrolean Parliament. Uh, 
We have one example, the, a, a decree of the regional uh, governor with court judgments. And also uh, at the bottom of this slide, we have some examples like soft law and house rules, which uh, are not formally part of that hierarchy of law. So that's the literature uh, which we have uh, seen in uh, today's uh, lecture. And now you hopefully know. So uh, to wrap up uh, what we have uh, heard in today's uh, lecture uh, and to answer the guiding questions from the beginning, uh, we have seen the definition of law. So binding uh, order for a human community, uh, let it be the citizens or, or the population of a country or uh, within the European Union, which can also be enforced if necessary. Uh, we've also seen that there are different uh, forms of law at EU level, at national level, uh, written or unwritten, customary law, different uh, branches of power. And we've also seen that most of those examples are hard law, so binding, but there are also examples of soft law, and again, uh, their importance should not be underestimated. Normally, as we've seen, law is enacted by Parliament, but although that's the rule, we've also seen that there are exceptions. Law can also be enacted by the executive power, so this decree that we have seen. Again, although it's, it is a very uh, old uh, concept, uh, the separation of powers of Montesquieu, uh, and we have here some additional uh, details uh, concerning Brexit. So a very old concept which was uh, uh, established or drafted in order to uh, avoid an abuse of power. So this separation of powers, but as we've seen, it can also uh, help us to explain new uh, new developments uh, like Brexit. Are there certain categories of law that carry more legal weight? Yes, we have seen this hierarchy of law with EU law uh, on uh, top of this hierarchy and hierarchy within lo EU law, but also in hierarchy within national law. So um, now you know about the concept of law and see you next time.